from what I was told. Second, don't try to travel without your passport. Whoops. Third, always check you're on the right plane. Can we just ensure that all passengers are going to Barcelona and not Glasgow or any other destination? Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. If you can use some exotic booze on a far-flung holiday, Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. One of Luton Airport's selling points is that it's just off the M1. Very convenient, in theory, but not today. There's been a massive traffic jam and everyone's late for their flights. Jane Bolton, check-in troubleshooter, has to bear the brunt. Hi, it's Jane. Who's that? Jane. Niece. Yeah, we're due to close in 25 minutes and we're 60 passengers down because of the M1. An accident northbound on the M1 is causing severe tailbacks to the M25 with traffic queuing on the slip roads. The M1 southbound is also slow between junctions 10 and 8. <laughs> Hiya. What's your surname, please? Uh, I don't know what's going on. I mean, you know, it's ridiculous. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, if we didn't, if we didn't do something that wasn't right, we wouldn't have been here. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not going to say what it is. It's on camera. <laughs> Bye. Jane must close the flight in one minute, even though there are still 50 passengers missing. Hi, um, 52 males. Find out what he wants. 55 females. Four. Yes. How many's travelling? Four. Right. 53 males. Yeah. 56 females. These are the lucky ones. The last to make the flight. Check in is now closed. All oh, right. We'll go with that. <laughs> Cheers. Bye. I can't. You've actually missed it now. All we can do is put you on the next one this evening. Um. It's tonight at quarter past seven, which gets you in, I'll find out for you. All these passengers can do is see if they can get on the next flight to Nice, which doesn't leave for another five hours. No, that's a sorry. Thank you. Nothing sorry as well. One moment, sir. The trickle of latecomers is turning okay, into a then, flood. Thanks. Bye. Hello. It, yeah, it's literally two minutes ago. I can't get any more on it. I know. I'm ever so sorry. I know. We held it for as long as we could, and they have to go now. All I can do yeah, with. Did I bring it up when you said that there's a 45 minute delay? No, it's actually got an early slot. It's only gone on time. They're actually boarding it now. They won't accept any more now. Well, I haven't been a check because, you know, this has happened before. When yeah, I mean, I've just spoken to the dispatch, the guys that are in charge of the aircraft. What I can do is put you on standby. I've said you've got one at quarter past seven. And is that full? Yeah, it is full at the moment, but we've got, we're putting people on standby on it at the moment, obviously, because of the traffic. We're having people coming through. No, I'm afraid not. I don't know if Devon Air have got any. I'm telling you the truth, it's full, and I can't get anybody else. Well, of course I am, it's here. I wouldn't lie to you. Well, you know, I have been lying to you before when it was. Well, I haven't lied to you, and I'm not lying now. I cannot accept any more passengers, and all I can suggest is that we put you on standby this evening. Hi, it's me again. This is going on time, isn't it? This niece. Yeah. It's just that I've got someone who knows someone who's just going to ring up and find out. And I've said, well, I can't get any more on because it's going on time. So, I mean, it's not delayed at all. All right, thanks. All right, lovely. OK, then, thanks. Bye. <coughs> Jane and her team are told the flight is leaving on time, but this passenger says she's been told it's delayed by an hour. You lied to me, and she lied to me as well. I've just called your office. She told me that the slot was put forward, that the 150 flight left on time, and in fact, it's not leaving until quarter to three. So you've lied to people. Well, I phoned, well, I haven't lied to anyone, because I phoned well, actually... Well, this woman over here office. lied to everybody. And this has happened, well, this is not, just a second. This is not the first time it's happened to me. I use your airline all the time, but this will be the last time. Well, that's you don't serious, lie to people. I didn't lie to you. you said everyone to the here and all the other there. people who missed the plane because of the accident on the M1, you lied to them all. That plane is sitting on the tarmac outside and it has, it's not leaving until a quarter to three.
No more passengers can be boarded at this late stage because the doors have been secured ready for takeoff. I can understand that, but all, all I can do is, like, explain to the last passenger, is explain to you what I've been told, and if I've been told I can't accept any more passengers, I can't. I'm explanations, I'm interested in solutions, so are you. Yeah, as I said, I, want, I would like to try and get you on the next flight because I cannot get you on this one. But the next, the next one, you're going to have the same problem. I know, we've got standby passengers, but I, it's so impossible we, for me to get you onto this. Why don't we try this. to get in touch with somebody at EasyJet who can make a decision, who can get on... My supervisor's on. actually in the office. If you just give me one minute, I'll go and have a word. As if it's on the tarmac, and it doesn't Yeah, I know, but the doors are closed and they're ready to go, that's why. Well, you just tell the captain to bring it back. No such chaos here at Liverpool Airport, EasyJet's second base. The M6 is running smoothly, and so far everyone's on time for their flights. Passengers on flight EZY801 to Amsterdam are being checked in. The plane is due to take off in an hour. The Brown family have planned a short break in Holland, but daughter Jennifer has left her passport back home in Manchester. Just check in there, please. Is there any possibility you can just hold the plane up for a few minutes until we get... What, what time do you think she's going to be here? What time is it like? Well, she said about half an hour, about an hour. From now? No, no, about half past six. Half past six. I mean, we close it at 27 minutes past, and the flight's actually running early. And the flight's actually running early. OK, then. Right, you better be here, you've got an hour. An hour. Oh. Fingers crossed. Can't believe it. Let's see what else she's forgotten. The passport is in a filing cabinet which is in my bedroom. So I've rang my brother and told him to get the filing cabinet in his car and bring it to the airport because I've got the key. So we can't get can't get the passport out of the filing cabinet. Dispatcher Kevin has to board the passengers in 15 minutes. All the family can do now is wait patiently outside and hope Jennifer's brother shows up in time. You're sure it's going to sleep? Ben, no sleep. <laughs> Where's the boy? Back at Luton, the strain's showing. Karen had been hoping to meet her boyfriend in Nice at the start of her holiday, but now he'll be gone by the time she gets there. So she's now on standby. It's not EasyJet's fault when passengers miss their flight, but Jane always takes the flak. And there's lots more to come. Oh, you are the lady who yes. told me to left. I've it's since boarded. discovered... No, I'm sorry, but I've since discovered that it's actually sitting on the tarmac. Yeah, and everybody's on board. And won't be leaving until a quarter to Well, I've been told by the guy who's and in charge really of the aircraft... Feel, I I've just had a quick conversation with the people over there. You're the supervisor, and it's not the first time it's happened to me. I've I I discovered by you. ringing up the office that you lied. You tell people planes are on the way and that they're, they're delayed. If you just let me explain to you, the guy that's in charge of the aircraft has, has everybody on board and he won't accept well, so any more passengers people? because the doors are closed. So why don't you tell back. people that? When I you told you when you got here it was too late no, and I couldn't accept no, you. No, you said the slot of... Your words to me... And it was going on no, time. your words to me were the slot has been put forward. And the, the slot has been put forward, yeah. You were told it was Nonsense. delayed originally. I was told it was delayed, delayed. by 45 and minutes. And it hasn't. They put the slot forward. No, I'm sorry. Well, I've just been told by dispatch that it's going on time. I just called the office. It's very easy to find out. You should check the I've just been down to departures and they've told me the slot has been put forward to on time. Sorry, it's not on time. I've been only passed on on time, it's 1.50, not quarter to three. I can only pass on the information they give to me. I'm and sorry, they tell me you lied, and I advise time. you not to do that. I haven't future. lied to you at all. I've just passed you on what I was told. That's enough. Just when you want a delay, there isn't one. Time's running out for Jennifer. But Mum's got an idea. She figures if she walks slowly, she can buy her daughter a few more precious minutes. And chatting to the staff will kill some time too. How slowly can you walk up a flight of steps? 
something else. Uh. Kevin's preparing to close the flight. Back at Luton, passengers are finding different ways to kill time. And Karen's no exception. A friend Patricia is a faith healer and she's using her powers to help Karen get through the trauma. Oh great. Oh traffic jams. Southall then. Oh, she's back again. <laughs> she's back. At Liverpool, Kevin's closing the flight to Amsterdam. Um, one female, no bag. One extra female, no bag. Making the TLB 128. OK, we've got her. No bag. We've got her. Oh, lovely. Come on. Come on. Thanks ever so much. Fancy turning up on a flight to go on a holiday without your damn passport. She shouldn't have made it, but she did. She was lucky. In the terminal at Luton, late arrivals from the M1 traffic chaos are still pouring in. But outside on the tarmac, things seem to be going smoothly. Yankee Charlie is being prepared for its flight to Barcelona. Dispatcher Darren is responsible for getting passengers and baggage boarded and the plane refuelled. It should be taking off in 15 minutes. But it won't be going anywhere until he can find some fuel. Hello, John, do you know uh, the fuel figure, please, on the Yankee Charlie? I okay, can't get it off him. Have we got any fuelers at all for Yankee Charlie? Uh, Yankee Charlie's not ours. Ready to search. Yeah, Mr. Kidjo, have we got a um, number for Shell, please? 261. Thank you. Sorry? It's all going to plan. It's all going to plan, except that we haven't got the fuelers now, so really I'm looking for the fuelers. Um, they've left their answer machine on, which doesn't really help. At least flight 219 is all fueled up and on its way to Nice. Captain Pete Woods is one of EasyJet's 150 pilots, flying over 6,000 miles a week. We're doing quite well. We're just to the south uh, west of Paris at the moment. We've got about an hour before we land at Nice. And we've just picked up the weather for Nice and... Uh, there's a thunderstorm going through there at the moment. So what we're going to do now is program the arrival into the automatics, and uh, when we get a little bit closer, we'll pick up the actual weather from the again and uh, update as necessary. Each flight you do, even though the destinations are the same, something crops up differently on each flight. So it's never boring. And today is going to be anything but boring. Hey! Back at base, and with just two minutes to spare, Darren's finally found some fuel. The king loves Elvis EasyJet. EasyJet is for the king. It is indeed, yes. Sorry? Did you say Glasgow? <laughs> Excuse me? Did you say Glasgow? No, oh, Barcelona. Oh, not going to Glasgow, are you? Yeah. Ah, oh, no. Yes, no. Sorry. Um, did you, when did you come... Did you go through the departure lounge? Ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention for a moment? Can we just ensure that all passengers are going to Barcelona and not Glasgow or any other destination? Elvis, you can sit down and behave yourself, please. The plane will be taking off without Darren, but he's hoping that will change soon. He wants to join EasyJet's cabin crew. I really do want this job with EasyJet. I am sick and tired of working on the ground for a handing agent. Um, and I really do want to get up in the air and visit other countries. And I'm just waiting for this postman to arrive with this letter. Pete is on his way to Nice. Oh, he was. The weather has deteriorated rapidly and he needs to make a decision. You want to develop to Lyon? And two more holds. That is no further improvement. So we've got eight minutes holding time. We've got eight minutes holding. We'll have to divert to Lyon. 
Without enough fuel to queue over Nice, Pete and his passengers are off to Lyon instead. Okay, heading north. Confirm level. Heading north. 46 Delta descending. Pardon, 46 Delta descending. Niveau 180. Back on solid ground, the second flight to Nice is about to close. Karen and Patricia are about to find out if there's room on the plane. As much as we'd love to, we can't hold an aircraft because we don't know who's going to turn up and who isn't. So if we can meet the time, then they go. But uh, no, we've had a few. We've got a few on standby for tonight for Nice. But I don't know if we're going to get on next. It's full, so I'll have to wait and see. But where are you going today? I'm going south of France. I'm going early, so I'm leaving now. I'm very late. I've got to get changed yet. And the uh, weapon's probably waiting outside, wondering where they're lying. <laughs> you might bump into some of your passengers. I hope not. No, I'm driving there, so I won't. I won't. Not anyway. down the M1? Not down the M1, no, definitely not. Well, I'll probably get caught in another accident now. <laughs> I'll see you later. At least someone's day has gone to plan. Can we check in now? OK, I've just got to find out if the nation is there. got to close it in three minutes. Three minutes. Karen and Patricia can only get on the flight if two people don't show up. <laughs> Captain Pete Woods has landed in Lyon, 178 miles from where he should be. EasyJet never normally fly to Lyon, so there are no refuelling arrangements here. Time to call head office for help. Hello, we've diverted to Lyon. Well, we tried to get into Nice. The weather's pretty grotty up there, and all the traffic that's going into Nice is backlogging up. And so they gave us an approach time 45 minutes uh, beyond um, our present time. And we don't carry fuel for that, so we've diverted to Lyon. Uh, no, not really. We're just sort of on our own, on a remote stand at the moment, but. Right, as I speak to you now, I just see a man who's coming up the stairs. Bonjour. Hello. Ça va? Um, for the fuel. Yes. Um, the fuel operator told me that you are not in contract with them, so you have to pay it cash. Pay it cash? Yes. It costs at least a thousand pounds to fill her up. Now, do we have a fuel carnet for this place that's acceptable? Yeah, should be. Are they acceptable is the uh, interesting thing. Right. Okay, Dave, good man. Thanks, Dave. Bye-bye. How do we stop this? End call? Pete's mastered the cockpit's 422 knobs and dials, but mobile phones are another thing altogether. Yeah, I do you how this works. Oh, there we go, that's off now. Good. Can I leave you with it, Bruce? I've got some, uh, some serious admin to sort out. Time's moving on. The delay is now at least an hour, and Pete's not that keen to put a grand on his own credit card. He's desperately searching for a carnet. A written credit facility. <laughs> there are no fuel carnets. At last, a carnet. The passengers could soon be on their way. Oh dear. It's a BP fuel carnet. Wrong one. Elf services were on standby, but with no way to pay them, they're leaving. Pete's back to square one. Karen and Patricia are still <laughs> trying to make their way to Nice. Hello? OK. Was just the two. Hudson and... Well, I haven't put them on yet. They'll, they'll be in a snow shows when you do get them. But you just have to remove them and then check them out again. OK. Bye. Right, they've had two no shows. Have I got time to make a phone call? Uh, after you've checked in. After you've checked in, thank, thank you. you. At last. Uh, I'm sorry, were you before me on the stand? Yeah, they were. Yes. There was a lady in white, there was a lady in white and a gentleman in a suit and a young man. No, I've got two ladies that went to the nurses room that will be for you. Right, that's all done, so if you just go up to check in, they'll check in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lucky okay. okay. we were the first uh, this uh, afternoon, wasn't it? lady in white, there was a gentleman in a suit, and there was a young man with a beard. Three people in front of me, I know that for sure she told me. I've got first to go, I'll stand by, are two ladies who were in the nurse's room. 
the lady in white, the guy in the suit, the young man with the beard, and me and Katya. Yeah. And That's it, four and five. First, yeah, well, I can understand that, but, but these two ladies have got on, so what we need to look at is how early we can get you out to Barcelona. I don't, Listen. I don't want to go to Barcelona, I want to go to, to, to Nice, yes, nice, yes. For God's sake. Yeah. Pete wants to be in Nice too, but he's still waiting for his fuel. The French dispatcher has returned with a possible solution. I don't need to come up with it to begin with. Right. Excellent. We've had to give him the telephone number of the finance director, Nick Manudakis. OK, so he's happy with that. He will phone Nick Manudakis and um, he's happy to refuel uh, on that basis. OK to end, I suppose, is it? Yeah. Oh, no, that's his call now. Oh, oh, oh. What do I do here, Bruce? How do I get this back? They're back on course for Nice. I understood the problem was the traffic it didn't have anything to do with EasyJet, but fair is fair. We're on the waiting list at number four and five. The young lady in white was in front of us, the guy in the suit and the guy with the beard. They were not, these two ladies were not even here at the time. No, they did not come 15 minutes ago. I was given this list when I came in. She didn't find me in the They're gone anyway. There was a lady in white, there was a gentleman in the suit, and there was a young man with a beard. Three people in front of me, I know that for sure. The woman in white got away with a different airline. The flight hadn't been delayed as long as she thought. With a tank full of petrol, Pete made it to Nice three hours late. And no one convinced this couple they weren't the victims of queue jumpers. Next week, Kevin drops a clanger. Oh, Kevin! I don't believe this. And Jane's patience is put to the test. Do you know where you're going to? Uh, Jeremy Spake from the airport documentary series is on Kelly tonight at 10.40. But stay with us now for more true life drama as we meet the neighbours from hell after the break.